Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode 38 of Studio Time with Rios. In today's video, I'm gonna be making that classic main stage progressive house. We're gonna make a drop together today and I'm gonna show you guys the entire process. Now, before we get into it, I do have a quick announcement. For Black Friday and this holiday season, I decided to sell 16 of my Rios Patreon sample packs together as a collection. This collection of sample packs contains each of the months from August, 2022, all the way up to November of 2023. There's 320 sounds in total and typically these packs are released each month and after that month is over the pack is no longer available so for this two week limited run they will be all available together as a collection available on my patreon shop the link for that will be down below in the description or in my bio with that out of the way now let's get right into it Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen so here we are blank fl studio project file let's get right into it so guys today we're showcasing the entire process i'm thinking we start with Okay, I think we should start with some break elements. I'm probably not going to make a break today just because I don't want this video to be super, super long. i uh, mainly going to focus on a drop, but sometimes what I like to do to build a vibe and build, you know, inspiration for me to make a good melody is essentially create just a really good sound bed, essentially. And, you know, typically that is with break elements such as, you know, a re-space and, you know, some nice beautiful pianos and an atmosphere of some sort. That usually helps me, again, get inspired so that I can make a really cool melody. So we're going to go to Serum. I'm going to go to my pack here and just get a simple re-space. And this should be off. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I like that guy. We'll keep him. And then I want to just get some simple, beautiful chords. I'm actually going to go to Nexus here because I came across this preset called Funeral. And it sounded really, really pretty. Yeah, I like that. Now, we'll do some very brief work here in terms of processing. I typically don't want to go crazy here, um, especially because I'm not working on a break. But I need things to sound a little good. So... Real quick, I'm going to make a very basic chord progression. Let's do like... Here we go. <laughs> yes, I can't edit that out. <laughs> Oh, okay, we're going to go. Okay, I actually like that. So, hit him with the... And then, like that. Yeah, I was kind of feeling a faster progression today. Now, one thing, because I am going for that classic main stage kind of sound with progressive house i want to make sure i'm using a dotted rhythm for my melody and chords um that's that ba, 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 ba. so just one thing to keep in mind there anyway so let's just make basic triads for right now just so that i can kind of customize this piano sound do some quick inversions here Nice. Now this piano is very, it almost has a telephone effect to it because it has a lot of, lot of unwanted like mid range. Actually a bit lower here at 400. And this, I want it to kind of go like that. Ooh, maybe I'll go to, see now I'm hearing this note. So maybe we can switch this guy to F sharp. F sharp uh, major here. Nah, it's too happy. I like making my shit dark. You know what I'm saying? But I'll just remove this E. Actually, bring it down. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep that in there for now. 
Cool, this EQ sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on a bit of compression. I love the LA-2A for pianos. Oh, I am hearing that A sharp though. Whatever, I don't wanna get too distracted by that. I could address that a bit later. I'm gonna also try to just mess with the velocity briefly, just with the individual notes. I literally do this at random. There's not really a rhyme or reason here. And then honestly, I'll just copy over some of the velocity changes. Go back to doing a little bit of random notes here. Now this might seem a little pointless, maybe, but the reason I like doing this is I'm just trying to create a cool sound so that, you know, I'm inspired to move forward with the rest of the track pretty much. And with that being said, I am really hearing that A sharp, so we're gonna try to make that guy work actually, even though it sounds a bit happy, so. Oh, I messed up. Mm. I don't know if I'm completely sold on that. Ah, that's better. That's a bit more in line with what I was looking for. That bass note was kind of throwing me off. All right, cool. So that's that's good enough. Um, the last thing I'll do is just throw on actually Luxverb. This is a new FL Studio reverb, and it sounds really nice, especially on more organic elements. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw on... I forgot what preset I really liked. I've only just started using it. We'll browse a few of these. I like that. Smooth. Cool. I'll turn it down a bit with uh, this guy right here. All right, now that sounds nice. We're gonna bring in the respace now. And actually, this is. A little too aggressive. We're gonna go for more of a classic sounding respace in the context of progressive house, which tends to be just straight up simpler. I have one in here for sure. I forgot what I named it. Um, oh, come on. Eh. There we go, okay. Let me just explore some of these. Cool. This one's a bit more in line with what I'm talking about. And what I like to do sometimes, especially in this context, is I'm going to remove some of that bass because I want this to kind of feel like it's floating a bit. And I don't want this to be too heavy. So by removing some of that bass, I'm pushing it back in the mix. Yeah. Build up a mid-range. Just going to... Cool, that sounds good to me. All right. So now um, we'll put this in the mix here. I'm actually going to separate the two as well. Take the respace, put that on a new track, and then I'm going to work on getting like an atmosphere or something. You can check to see what I've got in these Patreon packs here. I've got a few nice atmos atmospheres.
Maybe this guy. Okay, so this one can work. I'm going to do a little bit of work on it real quick. Just going to take away some of the highs. And we're going to drown it in reverb. Default preset sounds good, actually. And you know what? We also have to brighten up this piano. Um, for that, we'll use novel tech character. Donde? Here we go. Oh, I love that one too. See this guy. Oops. All right, so that sounds pretty good. Um, the last thing that I wanted to try, which is really important, and actually now that I think about it, it might take the place of one of these atmospheres that I threw in, but that's going to be an ARP. I want to really make sure I get a nice ARP in. They are very, very helpful when it comes to making, you know, this classic main stage pretty progressive house. So we're going to go ahead and create one right now, and we'll use a pluck for that. These are a little too mean sounding. This is nice. Yeah, we'll stick with this guy. All right, now what I like doing when I'm creating my ARPs is I like to just take my chord progression. Hello, what just happened? Bang, bang, okay. And then I just kind of like to reference some of the notes that I'm seeing. So obviously this is a happier kind of chord progression and that's mainly in part due to this b up here so i definitely want to kind of mimic this b all the way through and then hitting this a sharp so we'll hit them with something like a little faster too Oh, you know what, though? I actually, I don't want it to follow the chord progression. That's my bad. Hold on. So we can just go... Hold on. Sorry, I have, like, two conflicting ideas in my head. So we're going to take this B guy. We're definitely going to incorporate G-sharp, and then I guess we can incorporate those two guys up there. I don't know why that was so loud. Probably because of the velocity. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Damn it. There we go. So I kind of want to just find a pattern. I'm trying to find a pattern that works the whole time amongst all the chords. That's really the key to making a good ARP in Progressive House. Hold on, I messed up that rhythm.
Dude, what is going on? <laughs> I gotta lock in. D sharp, D sharp. Listen, guys, this is how it goes. That took way longer than I care to admit. Um, or not even admit, because you guys watch me do that, but that's besides the point. Watch does not even sound good. That actually sounds pretty good. I'm going to take this F sharp, though. Or just G sharp move it to F sharp rather. Yeah. Honestly, this isn't even completely what I had in mind. Oops, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. But what I'm gonna do actually to make this sound a bit more the way I want is I'm gonna throw a band pass filter on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go kind of go crazy with some reverb and delay. I want this to almost sound like bubbles. <laughs> That's honestly the best way to put it. So to do that, I'm going to make it very, very wet, essentially, with reverb and delay. And, ah, I see I accidentally opened Shimmer. I haven't used this plugin in ages. It's probably why my computer's like, oh, you need this guy? This guy that's been sitting in the back of all your files forever? Um, anyway, we're going to throw on some reverb. We're going to throw on Origin as well, make it a little saucy. Ooh. Love that. I don't love all of the added artifacts in the lows and highs, so I'll just hit them with another band pass. Lovely. All right. Um, I'm going to actually squeeze this guy a bit with OTT. And this piano needs a little bit of oomph, too. I'm not loving this. We'll throw on... Actually, Camel Crusher might be a good option. Camel Crusher's compression is really, really good, actually. I'm gonna try raising this ARP up an octave too. Okay, so on the origin, we're gonna just take down the saturation. Um, that is making it sound a little bit too harsh when we moved it up an octave, but I also need the ARP to play up an octave here. So. All right, now, I, I actually want to move on. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I, again, really didn't even plan on making a break, and I just did. Oops. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead now and... Yeah, sometimes I need to, like, listen to the music to see what, uh, what I want to do next, and that's going to be to add... I can start with my leads now, actually. Start with my leads. So let's go ahead now and... I'm going to focus on just finding like one or two really nice sounds and then I'm going to focus on building a lead stack afterwards. But if I can make a nice sounding lead with just one or two and make a cool melody, then I'm in a great spot. So that's loud.
Okay, I like Blue Fear. I like that. Yeah, if I ever go to a sound and then go, ooh, that's how you know it's a good sound to pick. Um, <laughs> what I am going to do to this sound, though, so I am going to layer it. I'm going to tell you why. Um, because I'm aiming for that classic, anthemic, main stage, progressive house, what's super crucial in those songs are obviously super saws. And whenever I have a super saw layer in my lead stack, it just kind of helps me picture, you know, how it would sound on, on a main stage in a progressive house setting. So it's just a bit easier to make a melody, long story short. So I'm going to layer it with a nice, super soft sound here. I want to go for one that's a bit plucky. That's a solid option right there. Okay, so let's layer the two. This guy needs to go up an octave. Yeah, see? A bit easier to make a progressive house style melody now. Bring our chord progression over. I always like referencing my chords whenever I'm making anything melodic that has to do with my track. Make sure everything works together nicely. Now, I did mention I want to go for that dotted kind of rhythm here. So, let's do that. I know this is off, but I kind of liked it. I kind of liked it off. We'd have to do some other stuff with the chords here to make that work, but I'm going to kind of keep that. I think that's an interesting bounce. to continue that chord progression huh okay hold on see pause here's my thought process folks i really would like the melody to finish off or not finish off but here on bar three i wanted to go to e and the next note my chord progression you can see has a d sharp which can be cool sometimes to have that contrast but i want it to harmonize properly and i should probably change the chord progression plus because my chord progression is a bit quicker it might sound more interesting to do something a little bit different here. So we're going to figure out some new chords real quick. Take a pause from the melody. Yeah, honestly, I think I did this in memory where you just kind of flip-flop them. Or even go to C-sharp. Not C sharp, um, maybe D sharp. that guy all right let's just try it let's just try it copy this over to the base as well
Oh, I hear the melody so ahead of my clear. <laughs> I hear the melody so clearly in my head. I just botched that. I'm keeping that in. Okay, so that that's actually the solution. I wasn't hearing E. I thought this note, I thought I wanted it to be E. I actually wanted it to be D sharp. Damn it. See, so normally I would edit this out. I'd be like, oh, just copy it over my chord progression. Nothing ever happened. But no, nah, I, I wanted to try those chords. didn't work out, and that's all goody in the hoodie. I don't know why I just did that. Go like here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Interesting. And you know what, whenever we see this kind of combination here, especially in these style tracks towards the end, it usually is a nice place to kind of start the melody. So that's something worth trying here. Start the melody here. I don't love this section here. This is part of the game though, folks. We gotta figure this out. What if I do this? Ooh. I think we're getting somewhere.
Okay. <laughs> this is obviously taking way longer than I anticipated. And again, this is just a real look. Listen, this is what it means to make music sometimes. Sometimes the melody comes right off the dome. Sometimes I got to work for it. All right. I think right now my problem is that I have too many conflicting ideas. I think this kind of like offbeat bounce kind of groove in the melody is not suited for what I have in my mind. Although I think it sounds cool, it doesn't work with the melody that, again, I have in my mind. So I think we need to nudge this guy over, make it a little bit more easy to digest. This needs to be fixed too. This is like shit. Okay, yeah, so that that rhythm is a lot simpler. And that's another thing that I tend to try to do. If I have too many ideas going on, what I just try to do is simplify that melody. And it usually works out. And this melody sounds pretty solid. I'm not like head over heels about it. Not yet, at least. Um, but it's pretty solid. Let's get rid of this. This is our melody now. This is our melody. This is good stuff here. Get rid of that guy. This is our piano. I'm gonna take a quick second to just label everything. Piano. We'll say lead pluck. Actually, this is probably gonna wind up just being our leads. Leads. Arp. Reese. And then Amos Ben. At most pulse. Cool. Beautiful. All right, now we can move on and actually work on this drop. So the beautiful thing is now with this lead, I really like this lead and I do want this to be the focal point of my drop in terms of the lead stack here. Now, I'm going to wind up treating this kind of like as my main lead. So I know right now you guys see it's two layers, but I'm going to pretend it's just one, one sound. That's how I want to treat this because this sound as a whole is my main sound. This sound as a whole is what I want the main sound to be. And then I'm going to add some supporting layers to this. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and add a, a ravey kind of super saw now to this stack. And I'm actually going to go to uh, Spire for that, not Serum. We'll go to Spire and we're going to grab... I have a few good options here. Let's see. That's cool. That kind of makes it feel a little bit more unique because that lead's kind of goofy. <laughs> it's a little weird. Now I'll add that traditional super saw that I was looking to add because that's not what I had in mind in the beginning. And this is kind of strange because normally I layer all my leads under one layer here, but I'm kind of doing them separately today. But we spice it up. 
So I was looking to add, yeah, something like something that screams main stage. Mm, it doesn't sound that good up an octave. Yeah, nah, this sounds way too basic. Don't like it. Let's get a different one. This one could be cool if I open up the release a bit. Sound is way too wide as well. We'll use this guy to kind of tame it, reel it in a bit. Okay, so here's my lead group. Now, on this lead group, this is where I'm going to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, What can we do here today? So, <clears throat> we straight up need some power, a little bit of saturation. I'm going to go ahead and do Saturn for that. We're going to do Camel Crusher Compression. We need to add weight to the sound, and I'm going to do that with SSL Channel. And we're going to essentially just boost 300 hertz or so. Add a bit of warmth into the sound. going to reduce the mix on the Saturn. Actually, there's some hoopla going on here. Hmm. Let's just decrease. Um. Oh, okay. Whatever. Yeah, that's better. There was some, I see the thing is I don't use Saturn often and when I see all these different automations and stuff I just don't know how to adjust that without messing up the whole entire preset. I have Saturn to open up on Magic every single time uh, Saturn opens because this is really the only <laughs> this is the only reason I use this plugin. I love what this Magic preset does. Anyway, I digress. This is sounding really good. We're going to go ahead and add H delay for some extra space. We're going to do some EQ work. I really want this whole entire stack to be more present in the mono, uh, in the mono department, kind of like down the center, I mean. So we'll just make a boost here, only in the mids or the monos. I don't know why they call it mid side. I feel like that's confusing because of the mid range. The mono section, <laughs> all right. I think we're pretty good, for right now at least. I'm actually going to just remove the Camel Crusher altogether. And instead, I'm going to go for a Standard Clip. I'm going to put Standard Clip here at the end. Hit him with a little Soft Clip Pro. Yeah, I'm not even using the clipping portion of this plugin, but I love this saturator here. Cool, that sounds good. I really got to get a move on things. I'm kind of moving like a slug today. All right, here are my leads. Bang. These will be my leads. 
I'm actually going to just take one second and put them all together because that is how I prefer it. So let's do that. And then this one. I'll go like that. Okay. That's fine. Cool. All right, so next, the thing is with this style of progressive house, I really like to make it um, almost heaven-like, right? Almost like a heaven-like, <laughs> that's that's the way I like to do it. So what this means exactly is I want to go for really angelic sounding pads. This is just my personal, um, my personal cup of tea. This is just how I like it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to find... Some really beautiful pads here that give you that kind of angelic, heaven-like feeling. Wait, this one's called heaven-like. Nah, I don't like it. This is cool for like a background, but not really what I'm looking for. This might work as a layer. Let me see, because there's way too much body in this sound. Let me just try something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I don't like this. I don't like this. Stick with the plan here. I liked this one, I think. Okay, yeah, so we move it up an octave. We're going to take down the attack so it feels a little bit more instant and take away a little bit of release. So essentially making more like a key sound or something. We're going to layer a detuned saw sound to go along with this pad here as well. I want to remain I want to I want to have this sound remain a little bit simple, so I don't want to go, you know, too nuts here for my chord section. Um let's check some of my chord stacks. Let's see if any of these sound good. Come on. There we go. Goodness. Okay, I really like these two sounds together. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make a chord group. That's what I meant to say. And the last big missing piece that we're going to use in this kind of chord group is a piano. 1,000% going to need a piano. And in this piano, I'm going to make sure it's playing that dotted rhythm. That's going to be super, super crucial. And for that, I'll use... Mm, I'll try to use for that. Probably Nexus. We'll try Nexus. Actually, yeah, we'll stick with Nexus. Sometimes it sounds good to use a more organic sounding piano, something from like Keyscape or Analog Lab or something, but I think for what I have visioned in my mind, I want it to be almost like kind of like a dance piano, actually, dance piano. Yeah. Just increase the release slightly, and then let's turn this into that dotted rhythm that I'm talking about. And actually, before I go crazy with this, I need to copy over my lead as well, because I need to make sure I'm following the exact same melody as my lead. Not melody, excuse me, but the rhythm, rather. So here we go, bang. Okay, yeah, I was, so... Just do this.
So immediately going to soothe here. Kind of tame a lot of those harsh spikes that we're getting since this is an artificial piano. I do want to compress it. I want to give this piano kind of just that classic squash sound. And something I like to do sometimes is use Arvox. This is a vocal compressor, but at the end of the day, this is just a compressor and it does work in instances like this. A little bit of OTT as well. Okay, I might have to change this sound, but let me see. Actually sounds really good. I don't like all of that noise coming from this one though. So I'm just gonna roll off some of that noise. Yeah. All right, so these will be my my solid chords. And these will be my groovy chords. I like that. All right, awesome. So yeah, guys, now we're in a great spot. We do need to work on the chords briefly. Um, all I'm gonna do is just try, bleh, I'm gonna try to create some space for the bass that is on its way. And I'm gonna just really focus on this 300 Hertz range. I'm gonna roll off some of these unwanted lows as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, that feels way better to me now. Awesome. All right, so now we can go ahead and move towards adding the bass, as I just inferred. So here we go. The bass is going to be interesting. Um, I'm thinking we're going to stick with a relatively tame bass stack. I don't want to do anything extraordinary or crazy here. The reason is I kind of want I kind of want to have the more melodic elements of this drop stand out and the bass truly take a supportive role, which is different for me because normally I like the bass to be really loud and present um, in my tracks. But today I'm kind of just going for a different style. So all goody in the hoodie there. I said that twice today and I think I'm going to make that my catchphrase for this winter. Uh, let's go with um, something chill. Standard progressive house. Yeah, these are all so aggressive. Um, okay. We're gonna have to take a field trip to Serum. I know in my own pack, I have some simple gritty sounds, I called them. Simple gritty bass sounds. And these are are going to be very helpful for us today. Simple gritty is in the other pack, though. Volume 1. There we go. Yeah. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Very simple. Does the job. Now, actually, I think having a very, hmm, how am I going to describe this to you guys? There's a type of texture that you can achieve with a bass sound in Progressive House where it sounds kind of destroyed almost. It just sounds squashed across the board and almost just sounds like noise. It's so messed up. And sometimes it's a really nice layering tool when working with these chords. So that's what I'm going to try to do right now. It's a way to add extra weight behind the chords 
and it's going to make the chord sound bigger, right? That, that's kind of the trick here. I'm using a bass sound to help the chords. Now, for that sound, we need to pick something with a lot of mid-range, and actually, I think one of these respaces would do us justice. Like this, right? It's very noisy. Yeah, I mean, obviously you hear it as a bass sound, but in my opinion, it helps elevate the chords as well. We'll do a little bit of maintenance here. We're going to roll off these lows. Cool. Same for this guy. Got to make room for the sub. Okay, so now we're going to go for our sub. Now, what I like to do in Progressive House, or any genre where you're making, where the bass line changes often, I like to choose a sub that is harmonic, has harmonic content. The reason is, folks, is that when you do that, you basically have a sub that feels consistent when you're changing notes. Otherwise, if you use too simple of a sine wave, it might sound stronger on certain notes, but it'll ultimately sound weaker on other notes. So when your bass line is changing, it's just going to sound a little all over the place. And you can make it work, but it's just a lot of work to make it work. So this is just a nice, like, kind of shortcut. I take... Not that sound. Let's do... Yeah. So actually, this preset in particular, I love to make into subs. So it's very simple. I'll just roll off. Starting from, like, 300 or 400. We'll try three. And like now listen to this, right? Like this sounds like a mean warm bass. We're going to actually go even steeper or lower on the frequency spectrum. Perhaps make this 24. Yeah. See, now we have a really fat, warm sub bass and it'll sound consistent when we're moving along these notes here. Now, to help this further, I'm going to use B72. I like Fat Rock. I'm going to also experiment with bringing these guys down. That's not the sub. Whoops. These guys. Now that sounds really good for my bass stack. You see what I mean though? Like how I mentioned earlier, it's subtle. You know, it's doing its job, but it's not overbearing. It's not, you know, overpowering at all. And again, even though that kind of goes against my typical taste, my usual taste, this works a lot better in the context of this drop. When you're trying to let the leads and the chords shine through. Dude, this sounds awesome. All right. Now we can experiment with adding some additional sounds. So the first and easiest way to do that is by dropping these guys over here. See how it sounds. They might work in the drop as well. This one's too subtle. This one's too low also in terms of the frequency that it's playing. The art maybe, maybe could be a nice, could be a nice addition here. I like it for now, I hear it. 
Don't know if I'll hear it in the context of the drop once I add drums, effects, and all that good stuff. But for right now, it'll stay. She's good. Um, all right. So now we should probably start adding sidechain, get some drums going. And then once I get drums, and then I can kind of assess, uh, or excuse me, I should say this. Once I get the drums going, you kind of fill up another like 20 or 25% of the drop. And then from there, you have to just make decisions excuse me, if you should add anything else or take away anything once the drums are in, because that's kind of like the last big missing ingredient. So by adding the drums, it'll kind of tell us, you know, if there's any other things that we should add after the fact. For the drums, and especially for what I have in mind today, we're going to go very, very simple. All right. So we're going to just stick with having a very, very noisy progressive house ride. This guy. Perfect. And then we're going to go for a very smooth basketball-esque kick. And for this, I'm going to kind of venture out just for a second. I was experimenting with some of these kicks from Koyu's Pack and some other projects, and I love the way they sounded. So I'm going to experiment with these today. Okay, so... Obviously, I didn't add sidechain on anything yet, too, so that's going to sound a little bad, but stick with me. Okay, add the ride, lower the ride. Yeah, very nice. Now we go ahead and we add sidechain to everything. So for the leads and in for this style um, for this style drop, I want to make sure that the leads have minimal sidechain. You know, I go as low as 50 sometimes. We're going to have to play around with this, but I want the leads to really kind of feel like they're floating almost. And if we add too much side chain and get too much of that pump, it's not going to give us that floating feeling. Okay. Chords next. Chords, we can probably go a bit heavier. Okay, so we're going to have to add sidechain individually. Actually, let me think. So here's my dilemma. If I add sidechain on my bass group, everything is going to be sidechain the same. And I typically like to make sure my sidechain on my sub is heavier than the kind of other basses. So obviously, if I just throw one sidechain on the bass group, I lose that flexibility. So yeah, we'll just add everything individually instead. Okay, so now we have to do some mixing um, or, you know, further processing rather, as I would prefer to say. The bass, she's lacking some warmth with the kick. There's a big disconnect right now. And one of my favorite ways to kind of, you know, fix that disconnect is to use Pultec. Now with the Pultec, I'm going to basically bring out these lower frequencies until they're giving me the same kind of oomph as the kick. Right, like that's too much, obviously. Now we'll attenuate some of that.
gonna just try this kick instead. So this kick is really good. For this style drop, I do want it to be softer. So I'm just gonna make a few dips here and attempt to make it feel a bit softer. So now here is where I would have fun experimenting. We have a really great foundation now for the kind of main buzzy bass, right? Sometimes it's fun now once I am, you know, gathering a clear picture of how I want this drop to sound. It's fun to experiment because in my opinion, this bass stack is almost a little too clean, right? That was my intention was to make this bass stack feel simple. However, Right now, it's a little too simple. You got to bring that balance a little bit more to, to the aggressive side. And one fun way of doing that is just something like thermal, right? Or any distortion unit. Just trying to achieve different textures and, and bring out certain characteristics of this bass sound here. Like, this is already cooler, in my opinion. Now, that helps a lot. That's exactly what I had in mind. Brings out a little bit more movement down in the lows, which is what I was looking for. The other thing that needs to be addressed right now is just this kick. Um, not, totally in love, not totally in love with this kick in this setting, because I have been using this one a lot, actually. But in this setting, it needs to just be a little softer for my taste. So maybe we'll go with the boundaries one. All right, this one's actually too soft, so unbreakable maybe. I think the unbreakable kick is money. only downside actually of this kick though is that it's a little short we can try to use our bass to bring out some extra tail yeah that definitely helps i'm going to increase the boost here And then I'm going to also make these sidechain settings a little bit heavier here. We're going to switch it to mids for both of these bases and bring it down to like 90%. All right, one other thing that I'm kind of hearing right now is to add a bit of brightness to the leads. Also, we should bring some brightness to the quartz stack as well. It sounds a little bit muffled, especially in the context of this mix. Let's try brighter by one knob. We don't need the R bass anymore now that we've increased the bass um, in the pull tack here.
Now, we need an additional layer here for the leads, and I'm going to tell you why. Right now, the way the leads are designed, they're all very wide, and even though I added that little boost on my EQ on the lead group for the mono section of the leads, it still feels weak down the middle. So I'm going to right now grab a lead that will really provide us some you know, really good power down the middle, essentially. And one thing that I actually did in Monster, which was kind of interesting, is using a super saw, but then making that super saw full mono. Usually, you know, for instance like this, you would try to pick a simple sound, maybe, you know, a saw sound with little to no detune. But in Monster, I went full detuned, but then just made it mono. So maybe we'll do that. So we, really, we need a really aggressive sound. Like this. This is ridiculous. Bring this down an octave. Full mono. Let's see if this works. Okay, we need a different one. I'm going to go to uh, Tremor, maybe? Take away this rear delay, too. Much better. All right, awesome. We're in a great spot. Now, we can go back to working on some of the drum elements. We're going to keep this kick in the mix. I like this one better for this track. And then for the ride, we'll keep this guy as well. Now, to dirty up the kick a little bit, actually we can go ahead and layer a clap, a four on the floor clap, as I call it, or not, excuse me, I call it four by four. Like, uh, where is it? Right here. Four by four claps. All wheel drive claps. <laughs> uh, but nah, I like, I like to add these on top of my kicks. Sometimes to add energy, but sometimes to add a little bit more snap to the kick. Yes, yeah, so you know what? A lot of these are geared towards adding energy. I want to add snap. So maybe we'll just go like this and do it ourselves. All right, cool. Helps a bit. Copy this over. Very nice. Now, we can go ahead and also throw in some clap fills. Um, clap fills are very, very essential when it comes to making Progressive House. Right here, I already know what I'm going to do. Cool. 
cool. Now we should get maybe one more thing here and here, but something subtle. Because sometimes if you overdo the percussion in a progressive house drop, it can sound a little fugaze. I'm just hearing like a, like a one tom hit or something. But a tom would clash with the kick. So we could do maybe... Let's side chain on this. Get rid of that first hit, but keep a little bit of it, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so these are very simple fills, but very effective in my opinion. Plomp Tom. I think that name is so funny. <laughs> and then we'll go for the clap fill. Just rename. Try to stay a little organized here. I also want to move my drums up. My drums are always at the top here. Okay. Love it, love it. We're gonna go ahead now and add some crash effects and like white noise and stuff. So right here, I love just a simple crash to kind of go every four bars is a good shout here. All right, now for the rest of the effects here, I like to go for effects that are, <clears throat> excuse me, a bit textured. Stuff like that, right? Something that's not, it's more of like a laser effect than it is white noise. Typically, it sounds cool. All right, so I like that. The last thing that I'm gonna add is just an exhaust. This one kind of has a laser built into it. Hold on. That's too short. Sorry. So, essentially, I'm missing energy in this drop, okay? It's becoming clear to me now more and more, especially as we add the drums and the effects that actually some more synth work needs to happen. But, with that all being said, I do want to add, instead of an exhaust, this guy. This is kind of like an all-in-one that I've used in a lot of my tracks. Sounds very nice. Yeah.
Cool. So now, yeah, we we gotta go back to to some of the synths and the bass here because there's some power and just I don't know energy missing. There needs to be a bit of noise on this lead. I'm gonna try to bring this out more. All right, that helps. And then the next thing is that body in the low mids. We can do it. We can fill up that body um, that's missing with chords or bass. But I'm going to do chords because I want this to feel more melodic. Now, for those chords, we're going to go for, I think, just regular saw chords, I reckon. Um, I use this preset all the time called yours. It's got a little bit of a little bit of wobble to it. But this might it might sound too much, but it might sound good. We're gonna try it. Okay, so not the right sound, but we're close. You can see what that's doing. It's filling up, you know, that meat down low. Okay, um, let's just go to my favorites. Let's see what I got in here. I typically don't use Serum for like chords, but. Okay, definitely more of like lead and bass work for sure. No, there's no way that works. Okay, yeah, we're gonna scratch the idea of serum actually. We're gonna go for um Ooh, we're gonna go for analog lab. Because if it sounds vintage or a little smooth and analog and stuff, that's a I think that's a winner right there. That's a good idea. Hit keys. Let's see what we got here. So good. So good. We're going to also go ahead and add some of those energetic cra uh, craps, <laughs> some of those energetic claps that I showed you guys before here. Just to add a little bit of like pop on every single kick. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, now the next order of business is gonna be to clear up this bass sound. I think what I'm gonna try to do actually is I'm gonna brighten up this guy. Open the cutoff all the way. And what I'm gonna do is remove a little bit more lows. And we're gonna use something like Focus One to saturate it and to add a little bit of compression to it to make it brighter. Next order of business is gonna to be to remove more of those low mids and lows.
Awesome, 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 awesome. All right. One thing that I want to try just for fun is to add a bit of pitch automation here on the bass. Now, the reason is, is because I personally like a lot of movement on my bass. Typically, that movement is achieved through MIDI. But because today I'm going for more of like a, a solid bass line, right, just like long notes, I'm going to see if I can achieve a little bit of movement through pitch automation instead. So right now I'm just linking the three different bass instruments here onto onto my what is it called automation clip sorry i just got distracted because i also just thought it might sound cool if we layered a bass guitar in this drop and that would give us movement but anywho let's try this first so we we're not we're not gonna go all the way down an octave we'll maybe only do like 25 percent, maybe even less And we're gonna start it here instead. Yeah, I like that. 25 and then 50. Yeah, and then we'll throw it up an octave at the very end. All right, let's hear it. So dope. Also see there, I just threw on an R bass, try to get a little bit more power here out of the bass group in general. Um, and that sounds, that sounds lovely, man. Now, if we're going to be perfectionists, which by the way, I should probably check to see how long I've been filming this watch. My batteries are dead. This, this is straight aesthetic only. Um, Huh. Okay. I, I'm actually, fuck it. We're not going to pay attention to how long we've been filming. I feel like I've been going for a while now. Um, and I don't want to make this video too, too long cause it's unedited. Uh, but what I was going to say is if we wanted to be particular, we can swap out this ARP in the drum and try a few other background sounds, which I am going to do briefly. So, you know, I like to think of this ARP as an, a way of adding movement and a little bit more energy and just coolness to this drop. Now, if we take away that ARP, we should replace it with something that kind of fits that criteria. So in my mind, you know, that could be like a drone. It could be, you know, almost anything really. Almost anything that just sounds cool. <laughs> so let's see if we got anything in here. This sound might work, especially because B, and I'm working in B major right now, pretty much. Woo. That deserves a sip of my cold coffee after that one. <laughs> that is exactly what I was looking for. Movement. Energy, coolness, done. The drowning drone, ladies and gentlemen. Try to make it a little bit more narrow too. Yeah, see, I can go crazy with fills and shit too, but I feel like uh, I feel like I've been filming for a while. Let me check somehow, cause I don't wanna I don't wanna disturb my setup here, dude. I don't have a clock anywhere. <laughs> I use my phone for filming, and I don't wanna tab out of this, cause I don't wanna mess it up my screen recording. 
Okay, I, here's the thing. I'm not going to go crazy with Phil's here. You know, in my mind, I feel like I could take away the kick and go, you know, with some big snares and toms, go bum, 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 following the leads and shit. That could be cool. But we're going to just pass on that. Instead, we'll go for something a bit simpler. We'll just take away the kick. And we'll add some shakers and claps uh, or clap snares for the second half of the drop here. And then we'll probably call it quits. I'm honestly not even a bother with a build today, probably. Nah, it's a lie. I got to do a small build. Okay, let me do one thing at a time here. So we'll go for a clap, clap snare, if you will. Forgot to copy this over. Right, and then we'll throw in the arrow fill. You can never go wrong with the arrow fill. And, you know, just for vibes, we can filter down the leads. We're going to have to filter the leads regardless because I am going to want to throw them in the build-up briefly. Okay, now, because I have this massive peak here, if I leave it enabled, it's kind of like just boosting the high end of my um, of my leads, which is not good. We don't want to do that. We don't want to boost our top end leads the whole time. So I'm just going to automate the peak and do something like that. All right, awesome. So now what we can do is probably just copy over this stuff over here, and then this can act as my build, right? Boom. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create another filter for the build. And we're going to high pass it like that. And then we're going to reset it right here. This is going to be like our pre-drop fill. Okay, now here for these four elements. Oh, I actually don't like this ARP. Yeah, we're going to move that back to G-Sharp actually. Anyway, sorry, quick distraction here. So what I'm doing is just briefly making a group. That way I can filter all of these elements easily. And I'm actually going to do endless smile for it. 
We'll do this guy. And make an automation kind of like, whoops, kind of like this. Nice, nice and easy, huh? So obviously I need to kind of tweak that lead automation, but that's fine. We are going to just get some uh, snares, fills, all that good stuff here. Oh, crap. Hello? What's happening? Keep this on. Build. Do I not have anything named build? Fill? Oh, I did not have it selected. There we go. Let's see what this sounds like. Oh yeah, let's tweak this here. Okay. There we go. All right, now we can also just add a quick uh, or a few different effects. We can do impacts, risers, and sweeps. So for the impacts here. Actually, that would be better here. I like this laser, but it doesn't work. Um, the rhythm doesn't work here, and I don't feel like fixing it. Let's just go with... Um hold the phone, hold the phone. That was the wrong impact. Hold up. We just need a sweep now, and then we'll be done. Actually, no. Sweep, pre-drop, maybe lower the build volume, and that's it. that's good for the sweeps again this is a filler build if you guys um 
have watched any episode of Studio Time with Ryos, a lot of times I wind up just making a rough build up so that we can get some context. Um, only because I like to really spend time trying a few different options for my build ups. Um, and the first option always, you know, isn't the best option, basically. So, you know, this sounds good, but I would probably wind up trying a few different options and seeing what works best if I were to finish this idea. But anywho, let's just get in a nice little pre-drop snare. Um, here we go. I don't like this riser either. Pitching it up to B makes it a little bit better, a little more palatable. And honestly, the volume's not horrible, the volume discrepancy, so we're just going to leave that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Let's take a listen from the top, and let's see what I came up with. Dude, yeah. I'm hearing that fill at the end so clear. I think I'm going to work on this more because I actually really, really like this idea. And when I do, I'm going to fix that fill at the end because if it went like you just had everything kind of stop and had big toms and stuff go bam, 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 following that dotted rhythm. Damn, that would sound really good. But this honestly sounds really good the way it is too. Really happy with how this came out. And thank you guys so much for sticking with me for this hour plus long video hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys did enjoy today's video please be sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time i upload don't forget to check out my patreon shop for my brand new collection that just dropped of all 16 of my patreon packs and also sign up for my patreon membership if you guys are interested do a bunch of fun goodies there so yeah that'll be all for me today i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video